As we remain standing, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your way to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. And as you know the weakness of each of us, let each one find you mightiness saved through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading from Holy Scripture. from Paul's letter to the Romans. Just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all because all have sinned. Sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin was not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam, who is a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died through one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the effect of one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. <coughs> if, because of the one man's trespass, death exercised dominion over that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. 
For just as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. And now let us stand and read Psalm 32 and Tiffany by verse, starting with those on the organ side of the church. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is torn away. Happy are they to whom the Lord imputes no guilt and in whose spirit there is no doubt. While I held my tongue, my bones were the way because of my groaning all day long. For your hand was heavy upon me day and night. My moisture was dried up Son of God, 
command these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, it is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, then throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, <coughs> again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. And again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to them, All these things I give to you, if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve God only. And then the devil left him. And suddenly the angels came and waited on him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Pray to you, Lord God. Dear God, give us the insight and the clarity to love what you love. Amen. Please be seated. Okay, who's ever heard these words or anything like them? You may come out of your room after you've said you're sorry. You can see TV again as soon as you've apologized. No computer until you admit that you were wrong. Anybody ever heard anything like that in their whole life? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, how many of you as grown-ups at some point in your parenthood actually found yourself repeating things like that? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. You know, in my day they weren't taking away the computer, but I lost my bike many a time. And I've uh, heard a few of those, and then from time to time I hear myself saying those things to my own kids. Um, we, uh, you know, we kept that familiar pattern of recognizing and apologizing over and over again for the wrongs that we do, uh, somehow because that's supposed to bring us back to normal and get us back in the, in the world again, to end the time outs, to come out of our solitary confinements, to enjoy freedom of movement, and, you know, and maybe, maybe get on with what we were you know, wanting to do with our lives again. You can come out when you say you're sorry. You know, it's a very common formula. Uh, for some, it's, uh, it's restoration. Uh, for some, it's retribution. And for others, it's, well, I want the computer, so I'll just say I'm sorry, you know? And, and away we go. I mention these things because you may have noticed that some things have changed on the inside here at St. Matthew's uh, over this past week and from the weeks ahead. Uh, there are no flowers to be seen in the sanctuary, and you won't see a flower in there until you see lilies on Easter Sunday. Hmm? Uh, and there is a banner that Dylan carried in today, a very different tenor and tone. That banner has a crown of thorns and nails as the symbols. Those were the signs of Jesus' earthly fate come Good Friday when the uh, so-called authorities of this world crucify our Lord on the hardwood of the cross because he loved what God loved and he loved doing what God would have him do. Hmm? And uh, there are some other noticeable changes. One in particular, the color scheme on the altar and the stuff they hang on the priests, right? Uh, this time of year, it is a, it's purple. It's a, it's a deep royal shade. And it, it's there for, to connote seriousness and an inward searching of the soul during these weeks of Lent. What does it all mean? Well, it means that this is a serious time. Uh, it's a period when Christian <coughs> human beings uh, take a look at ourselves, and that's what this is for, to hold the mirror of the gospel up in front of you and uh, ask yourself, you know, what kind of people are we? Who have I become lately? And probably apologize to God for, you know, a fair amount of that, while at the same time committing ourselves to doing better with God's help and working at what kind of people we are, but also what kind of world we can help God fashion by doing the things, by loving the things that God loves. Now, in my experience, my elders grew up with notions that uh, Lent was supposed to be about, you know, giving up chocolates and saying you're sorry, you know, all the time, and that was about it. 
apologizing for all the wrong and the rotten things that we've done in the past uh, so that I guess we're supposed to feel rotten too um, and uh, sort of spring cleaning of the soul for the things of which you're guilty or that you feel ashamed. Uh, and that's a part of the devotional practice of Lent, to be honest with God, but, but not to feel bad, but to be released from that stuff because God wants us to be free once more. Uh, that's what that's about. But we do need to say those things to God no matter how painful or embarrassing. It's just good to share your inner burden with your God during Lent to find out that God's your friend, you know, and not your harsh judge. And there are other ways, there are some ways to do this. You know, you can just plain sit down with God and be silent and quiet and just let that stuff roll out and just say, God, forgive me those things and, and mean it. And, and things transform, you know, your relationships with your brothers and your sisters and your kids and, and the world around you, they are transformed. God lets that happen and makes that happen. Or you can, uh, you can make a list of the things for which you ask forgiveness or, the, or for which you need strength in this time of Lent. And make that list and share that with God quietly and then put it in the wood stove. Toss it in the wood stove and let it go. Or put it in a recycle bin. You know, and kind of feel your own spirit and your spiritual energy begin to recycle itself during Lent. Or, and the junior choir, they, they, were, they were grilling me downstairs. What is the deal with the tags? Are you going to sell us? Is there a price tag? Like, you know, what, what's going on here? You know, or you might try using a tag. A tag like this, you know, some of you got have them on your wrist. There'll be more in the back of the church over Lent uh, by that barren uh, Lenten branch. You know, that, that branch is as barren as we probably feel after these weeks of long, cold winter as this world looks right now. Uh, you know, there's not a sign of green or life in them. But, you know, our hope is for life and things to blossom to come. And uh, what you do with this is, is uh, you kind of fill in your own blank. Maybe you write down some of the things that you know that God loves and that you might want to begin to love yourself. You know, write down that thing and put it on the tree on, the, on your way out. Or maybe it's going to be something like, you know, Lord, forgive me for, and just, you know, you know what that is. And maybe you'll just write down, you know, I wrote the word impatience on mine. Uh, you know, I want the world to change today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want it to change yesterday, actually. And I wanted it to be better for my kids. And it's not all that much better. And I want it to be so much better for my grandchildren. And now I'm redoubling my witness to be sure. But, you know, so for me it was impatience. And I'm hanging it on the tree. Lord, guide me to it. God, strengthen me to God, help me love what you love. And just write something down. Put it on that tree. These are all ways to say I'm sorry for the things that are waiting on me, but I'm also hopeful about the things that we can do better for others so we can grow closer to God, to grow closer to God. And that is what Lent is all about, actually. It's not just the I'm sorry stuff. It's part of, it's really about getting to love what God loves in our lives. And that's what Jesus gave his life for, you know, on the cross. And to a degree it was for your sins, but you can't just say that rote stuff. You know, because there's a reason why you are forgiven. There is a reason why you are strengthened. It's to be a witness to God's love in this world. So the serious season is, uh, you know, it, it really is a serious thing. And I want you to think about what God loves. And if you're having trouble about that, you know, what does that mean? Well, think about how Jesus reached out and who he reached out to. Think about what he stood for. Think about what he taught. Think about what he and his followers, you know, were all about in their lives. And that should help you make a list. So uh, I, want, I want some help. I want some help. I want some help from some kids. I don't want to know what you're guilty about. Because that's not, that's not the point of life. I want to know what you think God loves. Somebody tell me what God loves. What does God love? Hey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
What else are the bigger things? What else does he have in mind? Nope. Yeah, you got one? Participating. Participating. Yeah. Big game. Well, what game? Uh, for what end? Does God love the earth and creation? Do you think, do you think God loves like the trees and the air and the dead things? And yes. Is that what did you remember? Animals. Animals. I don't know what we're talking about. Love the animals. Absolutely. What do you think? Yeah. Are you kidding? G H O S T S? Yeah. Ghost? Yeah. Ghost? Yeah. Ghost? Yeah. Ghost? Yeah. Well, if there was such a thing as a ghost, God would love a ghost. Yeah, I suppose. I don't have to think there is, but that's okay. You know, whatever it's supposed to be. Hang on there. Now, what about, what about, does God love people who are kind to each other? Yeah. And Jesus. And Jesus. What about? Yeah, God loves everybody, and everybody has to mean everybody. By the way, this morning, uh, you'll see, uh, this, this morning, uh, our former Bishop Dean Robinson uh, just, uh, uh, well, he's writing a column in the Daily Beast, which is a, um, this is a, well, it's a daily column that you can get online, and he's going to be running a column every single Sunday for the, for the Daily Beast. He's going to read it every day because he says that all means all. Tell me who you're going to say, John. Generosity. Generosity. Now we're having a business. Well, yeah. Any other good things that you know God loves? For the for I didn't hear that. Jazz came from people who were oppressed, and it developed into this beautiful form that's expressive of where we are, and it's done by music, and you don't make music by yourself, you make it with other people, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, these are the things we're talking about here. Uh, you know, there's going to be a welcome change in season coming soon. You did well to be here at the right hour. At 8 o'clock was here at the right hour, which is wild uh, this time of year. And I'm certainly ready for, you know, temperatures above freezing in, in March as well. Uh, and, but I also hope that all of us are ready for a change of heart, a change of two of heart this Lent. You know, a fresh start, a day of resurrection, you know, that comes little by little to us as we go about this. But also, you know, so we appreciate the day of resurrection at Easter when the lilies are up there again. Uh, we're in the Lord's rising above the thorns and the nails of this world will embolden you hmm, to uh, rise above the slings and arrows and challenges in your own path. For as you saw in that gospel this morning, and by the way, I don't believe in the devil either as a guy with red horns. Kids, you need to know that guy does not exist, and you know the, the boogeyman's not hiding under anything. You know, so I just need to clarify that. But I sure know the power of, of hate and the power of meanness, and that's what was being talked about. When Jesus looked that tempter right in his power, drunk, bloodshot eye, and he said, I will worship and serve God only. That was Jesus' way of saying, you know, helping us to be able to say, you know, my job is to love what God loves too. And, and when you do that, your sin will be far behind you. You'll be free to come out of your confinement, whatever that is in your life, restored and renewed to love and serve God and your neighbor, to let God love you. Greatest answer I ever heard. And uh, you'll do that in the example of Christ, who for us the tempter overthrew. Amen. Let us now stand together and confess our faith using the text of the creed, page 358 in the Book of John Prayer. <clears throat> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all the days of the universe. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God.
For the prayers of the people today, we use form two, found on page 385 in the Book of Common Prayer. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For Catherine, our presiding bishop, for Rob, our bishop, in the diocesan cycle of prayer, St. Matthew's Church, Gosstown, Reverend William Exner, rector, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. For those for whom our prayers for healing and encouragement are asked today, Reverend John, Wayne, Alice, Julie, Alice, Fraser, Christine, Greg, Marie, Phil, Karen, Diane, Alona, Jasmine, John, Dane, Aaron, Anna, Michael, Joshua, Randy, Rick, Leslie, Skylar, Mary Claire, Judith Ann, Cynthia, and Moira. For all who struggle with alcohol or drug abuse or love someone who does, for healing within ourselves and for those in our thoughts and hearts today. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed, Peter Jenkins, especially. Pray for those who have died. I ask your thanksgivings for the gift of reconciliation, forgiveness, and healing, for the rights to vote and to support our community this Tuesday. I ask your blessings for all known to us who celebrate birthdays this week, including Madeline Cole, Jimmy Waller, Haley Dobson, Lee Simons, Bobcat Grant, Corbin Paradis, James Levesque, Kathleen Cullen, Amy Poisson, and Rosemary Fry. And for those celebrating anniversaries this week, We also ask for prayers for the safety and speedy return of those deployed in the armed services and for comfort for their families, for all who pray for peace in the Middle East, Syria, and the Ukraine, for assurance and blessing to those looking for work and for their families. And as we worship intergenerationally today, praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored, especially Margaret Gorman, Francis Enid Rice, and Peter Daniel Charmanti, whom we remember today. Pray that 
we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, a lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you.
still fire uh, right by the right by the very barren branch of plant back there that tells you about uh, the fact that with this parish has been given a twenty-five thousand dollar matching grant uh, to um, to make sure that the building's still standing for the next generation. And sometime over the 2014, if you want to give 50 cents or you want to give you know 150 dollars or whatever, um, it, it tells you how to do that. And it's a wonderful opportunity for one of our newer families and they're anonymous who just want to be sure that this place is there for the next generation the way it was given to them. And so uh, and then that gives you what that flag uh, is going to win. Are there any other questions? Could you get your course in that? Okay. Uh, right. You have a little potty call. Uh, the community choir has, has our uh, anthem today. Let us all offer to God a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. May it be loud and most high. She was listening to one of my sermons. <laughs>
us join together in the great thanksgiving. The Eucharistic prayer is on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you bid your faithful people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Easter feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ gives himself for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen.